I'll give you a few feedback on your PowerPoint. I'm gonna skip the first one. Well, it looks like it's a decent size. And even though you have a background design, this is not really obtrusive. So for now, I would say it's okay. You can just keep them there. By the way, your lesson plan is well laid out. And I think that's a really good idea. The really good strategy. You added more interactions to your presentation. And also, you're having your students relate to their prior knowledge surrounding a topic. So building up the foundation is a really good way to start the lesson. Let's look at the image size. It's a decent photo. It doesn't really get pixelated. In here, you are going to introduce two major events, the Civil War and Emancipation Proclamation here. Depending on what exactly you're going to talk about each event, you might have to redesign each slide. This picture is color-coded color and it's a really good photo, a picture to show what you're trying to show. So it's a little shame that this is kind of small. And I would say dates are all uh, important here. So you, when you design a slide, you think about what elements or what pieces of information you'd like to show as a visual aid here. To think about that, you have to think about what exactly you're going to teach, what you want your students to learn and memorize or retain, understand. So in this case, you're talking about these one, two, three things. So these are the three pieces of information you want your students to remember and also you want your students to visually understand the states. Let's recap. You want to show this image for sure. You want to talk about this and this is also an important concept. So there are like one, two, three, four different things you would like your you want to present in your uh, in your presentation. So let's think about the balance between these four items elements. Uh, these items are so I would say they get less priority. Uh, in here. But you can present the same information orally, but you can't present this information orally. It's got to be visual so that it, gets, it gets a priority here. So for example, you can do something like this to make a better use of both uh, verbal and the visual information. And this would be a better implementation of a modality principle, which is based on a dual coding theory. So by applying this principle efficiently, you're actually doubling the amount of information students can actually receive. And the process. Anyway, when you're talking about the year, what what I this is what I did. The year is important, so it's a so it's a good practice to show the number or dates and years. And because the Civil War and the day had to be remembered in pair, placing it side by side or top and bottom is going to help them store them together in their memory. So I put them in really close proximity, so that they'll be stored together as a bundle. And you can actually use something like this. Instead of typing a whole sentence or paragraph, you could uh, just use the keyword or sign like this to, to supplement what you're talking about. Because you're going to be saying the war was fought by the states in blue against the states in gray. So you might as well actually use a, a, a graphic or, or a visual representation to support what you're saying. So this what I this is just an idea. It doesn't have to be this way, but you got an idea. And when you're talking about uh, Abraham Lincoln was the president of all the states, but states in gray wanted to be their own country. You, most likely, you're gonna be actually saying this. So while you're saying that, you could actually use the graphics to reinforce what you're saying. This is uh, my just my idea. So you don't necessarily have to do the same thing, but you got an idea. You are providing both kinds of information to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the information processing for students. And of course, you can animate this. Until you talk about that, you can hide them and, and you can show these pictures as you talk about them. That will be a better uh, implementation of a signaling principle. Yeah, this is a pretty good photo of decent qualities. I could try to push to the limit so you can show the details a little better. Uh, so you rearrange the positions and sizes a little bit. By increasing the picture size, you're also increasing the chance that they're going to remember this picture better. So start from this size and if it's not going to work for this slide, you make it smaller and smaller. And if you want to keep the consistency from slide to slide, of course you're going to have to make it a little smaller because you need a title section. 
One thing I noticed is that this title is taking up a lot of space, so uh, inevitably, you know, you have less space below this title to show things. So if you can redesign a title, I mean heading, a little bit, so that you have more space to actually put the content, more important content below that. That's actually a good practice. So kind of, so kind of juggle around, you know, with the size and positions. When I look at this slide, I can see this is designed more for the a review on a computer, just a computer or laptop computer. For example, there's a, a complete description of the, the question or event. And if the student is going to look at this slide and get the full content and full information for this event, yes, you're gonna have to have a lot of text like this. And you also wanna condense the slides so you can have put more information on each slide. That's what you're going to do with the review materials, lecture notes, or handouts. For presenting in class, you kind of do the opposite. So you have the dates, April 14th, 1865. If the date's important, make it stand out. And uh, so what people are supposed to do with this slide is uh, read and comprehend the sentence and get a context and try to match that with the image here. This is more like a two-step process. If they take time and process the information and make good connections between this and the is image, then there's a learning happening. There might not be enough time to process that in, in class if you're presenting this to cl whole class. What you should do instead is uh, combine them or in integrate them together into one image with the labels or keywords. So first of all, you start with a bigger image to implement multimedia principle better. So ideally, you want to go as, as large as this size and uh, it's kind of pixelated. So original picture might have been small. If you can find a bigger image, that works better. For example, this way you can take a better advantage of a visual channel and auditory channel. As you talk about this, your audience can focus on the image here and at the same time these texts are providing just enough amount of information for your for their brain to process so they are all working together synergistically and it creates a better learning experience as a whole and again I would say the picture is the most important thing in here I see four important things here the name on Rushmore the picture location and the name here. And you can actually say this verbally, orally, then show this picture. As I say, there are four keywords in there, actually three keywords in there. So, so you can use text for those three keywords. That'll work as a signals. So it's an application of a signaling principle. Using the arrow is a good idea. So I'll take that idea and uh, okay, make it more visible and use uh, text to show the name again. You can put it here or there. Technically, theoretically, this will work better, but at the same time, this might work also be better, theoretically speaking, so you'd be a judge of it. And again, if you created this as a review material, then definitely you have to have this here. But if you're using it for presentation in class, you don't necessarily have to have this in there. You just have to make sure that they're focusing on here in class while you talk about the penny. And if you want to make sure they can see the figure on the coin, you check the size from a distance. If you think you need to increase the size, you do that. I think the point is you're trying to show his face here. So you don't really want to make it too small. Then you, your students can't really see the face well better. Okay, here the main focus is to show Lincoln Memorial what they can expect to see there. And also maybe this, uh, also the fact, this fact here might be another thing you're trying to emphasize here. This too, location, the historical facts, and uh, what they can expect to see there. You kind of packed all these things on a single slide. It definitely can come in handy when they review the material, but, but when you present it in class, there are better ways to show things. You definitely want them to remember these two images after a few days after the lesson. You might even want these pictures to trigger the memory about the lesson. For that purpose, what I suggest you do is to 
show these two pictures, just like a slideshow. Okay, so showing pictures one after another like this. These images will be stored in their memory better, thus work as a trigger later on. And as you talk about the facts, you normally want to avoid typing the whole sentence to be redundant in terms of sentence level. Being redundant on a keyword level is a different thing because keywords like a single word or short phrase is going to be processed differently. So the audience can pay attention to your speaking to get the verbal information and then use the visual channel to you know, take in the keywords and short phrases like this. So there are less conflicts between these two pieces of information that way. And same here. And if you want to emphasize this quote, you can definitely use a picture behind it. But finding the right picture for this message is a little difficult. But if you can find it, that'll be, that will make it better. But if you find wrong picture, then that could work against it, so be careful. So you start off with a pretty good foundation. There are some tweaks you need to make, so, so discuss in your group and decide what changes you want to make to your PowerPoint. I'm looking forward to seeing what changes you decide to make as a group.